bit misty. So misty. Hello, sorry. I'm just uh, trying to get the camera to look okay. So welcome to jasonnewland.com. And Andre the Ferret. And this is a Let Me Bore You to Sleep session. And I was trying to figure out just then as I started the record. Well, first of all, why is this chair so squeaky? But the camera, the picture looks really um, foggy. And I'm not sure why that is. Oh. Anyway. Welcome to this Let Me Bore You To Sleep. And all it is really is just me talking. And that's it, it's just me and making weird noises occasionally. Hello. Andre needs to have his nails cut. His fingernails, don't you? Hey, he sighs. Sometimes he just sighs at me. What are you talking about now, Daddy? I don't want my toenails cut, or my fingernails cut, and you definitely don't want a bath, do you? No. If I say I'm going to give him a bath, that's what he does. Andre, do you want a bath? You want a bath? Let's have a bath then. No? Yawn if you don't want a bath. Yawn if you do want a bath. <laughs> I've been a bit unwell the last two days and uh, I've given Andre practically no attention. So this evening, since I've been up out of bed, he's been following me around a little bit. So I'm gonna just turn this on. Hello, Tony. Before I start, I'm gonna try and see if I can share this. I don't know why it's I can share this on Facebook just so more people can see if that I'm on. If I can share it on Facebook. Hopefully. Post. Okay, let's see if I can share it on Facebook again to a different from my actual page rather than my other thing. Post it as a group. Oh. Done, post. Let's see how else can I post it. But why I'm not gonna be doing this for a long time. Facebook. Group. Oh. Oh, that's it. That's enough. Done. Discard. Well, thank you for liking. And Tommy. Hi, Tommy. Well, in that case, I checked in at the wrong time. 
Why did you check it? Why did you check in at the wrong time? I've just started, literally just. Is the video upright? Is it or am I on the side? Because Sonabul says Gat Hasib. Hello. I'm just saying hello to a few people. For those of you listening to this on SoundCloud or you know, on a podcast, because you can't see what's going on. But you know, you can always come and watch the video, maybe. The camera's good, okay, cool. So this is a let me bore you to sleep. I will just be talking about whatever. And I'm welcome. This is the creakiest chair ever. Really is. Sometimes it doesn't feel creaky at all. And then other times it really, really feels creaky or sounds creaky. Maybe I'm just moving a bit more often than I normally do. I don't know, but it's creaky as you like. So you see this, the wall, where is it? You see that? You can see it on here. I can't actually see it on the wall. It only shows up when I do a camera, when I like film it. It's kind of the reverse to a vampire. You know, on cameras, vampires don't show themselves on a camera, but you can see them without a camera. See, I can't see this without a camera, but with a camera, I can see it. And it's like a stain on the wall, but it's not really. What it is, is just where the chair's rubbed up against it and <laughs> interested. Tommy, it's just there anyway. That's more of a visual story. So someone clicked like and now the like button's gone. Oh, if you want to click like again, if you are watching and you want to support me, then you can always click the like button. Thank you all. And as I said a minute ago, I've been a bit unwell, so I haven't um, made any live or new videos um, recently. So do I dabble in psychology? A question Tommy asked, uh, and Sion says thanks. Uh, yeah, I dabble, I've more than dabbled, I've actually I've got a degree in counselling where I studied a lot of psychology, part of that degree, as well as I've been interested in psychology for a long time, since I was a child. One of the first books was uh, on psychology I read was about Sigmund Freud, and uh, I read his life story. I remember sitting on a beach, I was about 17, 16, 17 sitting on a beach, reading it. It was quite nice, actually. But I bought the book, it was, uh, I think it was a hardback book, but it might have been paperback. But I remember it was thick, very substantial read. And I'll be honest, I didn't understand everything that I was reading. I'm quite happy to, to be honest about that. So yeah, as Tommy says, he was an unusual character, but interesting at the same time. Yeah, I quite liked uh, reading about Carl Jung and some of the others, the Alfred Adler, Carl Rogers, of course, because I say of course, but I actually got a diploma in person-centered counseling, which is based on Carl Rogers' work. How, lo how long am I? Soren asks. I'm not really sure. By the way, this is a live session. That's why people are asking me questions. And I'll, I'll answer questions if I can while I'm on here. How long am I? 
stream. Um, I, just, I normally aim for about an hour. Normally aim for an hour. Um, part of the reason it's quite. I don't. Not all the Let Me Bore You to Sleep's are live. And it's only very rare that I actually have the professionalism to let my fans or followers online know that I'm going to do one. So I don't give them, I don't give people any notice, which isn't great. But I don't always know myself when I'm going to do one. I just do it when I feel up for it. And that's kind of where I go. When did you start the stream? Um, 11 minutes ago. So it's 11 minutes and 14 seconds in. To be honest with you, when I first started the recording today, the stream, I was trying to get the picture to be okay. I forgot it was filming. I forgot that I was live. And I was like tapping the, tapping the phone and trying to clean the, the camera. I couldn't figure out why it was doing that, why it wasn't uh, filming properly. But there you go. Um, I'm always open to suggestions about what you would like me to talk about. So if you, uh, you know, for future videos, future MP3s, if there's something you'd like me to, to do, then let me know. Today, for some reason, I've had the busiest day on my website for a long time. So, thank you, um, Soren said he likes my chats. And these are kind of like my Kind of like a Jason chat, but when it's live, but it's it's also a let me bore you to sleep because I am just going to talk, get myself comfortable and just talk and talk and talk. And when I got my eyes closed, I can't see what's being written down, as it were. This is, I guess this is a mixture of things for different people. For some people it's nice to just have the, the company, to have somebody that's, you know, is there in person, in that moment, is live, and it's not a recording, you know? Especially maybe if it's early hours of the morning and perhaps you're having difficulty sleeping and maybe you don't want to go to sleep but maybe you do and perhaps there's no one else around at that time that you can talk to or interact with or even just uh, sit with as it were. So yeah, it's. Uh, I hope the microphone's okay. I just I don't know if you can see that. I've got it tied to my t-shirt. It's uh, a new microphone I got last week, and it's uh, it's kind of got an adapter and it fits into the iPhone, and it's so far I think it's working quite well because I, I talk softly. I'm not talking loudly. I suppose not, I never talk loudly, really, I suppose, unless I'm talking to someone on the other side of the road, which is a kind of a strange thing to do in some ways. Or maybe in a pub or like a really where was the place I was at? Oh yeah, sometimes I go for a walk to 
the local shops and the local shops are a quite a, a good 20, 25 minute walk from where I live. And it's a busy road, really, 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 really busy road. And sometimes I'll walk with a friend. And by the time I get home, my voice is all croaky because the pavement's not big enough for us to walk side by side. So my friend goes in, sometimes he goes ahead of me, sometimes I go ahead of him because I've got Andre with me sometimes and he's got uh, his dog with him and I find, you know, I'm sort of having to talk louder and it just affects my voice. I don't like it. I don't like speaking loud. I like talking softly and all that. It's just, just how I like what I do to be, how it is. So I thought I might actually be a bit more sleepier. Sleep. I'll have, I, I might do a real sleepy fi session today. So remember, I should have said this at the beginning. Only listen to me or watch the videos when you can safely close your eyes. And that stands for any video or audio that I do, I've done in the past or that I do in the future. Because what you find is the more you listen to me, it's just, it's just standard stuff. You start to get um, conditioned to become more tired and feel like falling asleep. And it's just it's just normal stuff. It's not not necessarily anything that I'm doing. It's just you just associate my voice with comfort and calmness, feeling safe, and maybe just you know being able to let go and fall asleep if that's what you want to do. Of course, you don't have to do anything because you're in charge and I don't boss anyone around because I can't, plus I don't want to. Never really seen the, the excitement of being able to tell other people what to do not really ever appealed to me. Some people are drawn to be in that position in their life, you know, maybe job wise or sometimes it seems that people have kids just so they can boss them about. But I'm sure that's not the case. But I don't want to boss anyone around. Just like with Andre, he, he does stuff that is um, yeah, isn't always great, you know, makes a mess. He he's got a new thing at the moment. Andre's my ferret by the way. Well he's my son, but I keep mentioning that just, just in case you're watching or listening and you're thinking, who's this Andre? Is he some weird ghost or something? And has he got a poltergeist in his house? No, it's not that. So Andre started, uh, and this is a recent thing, just the last week or so, opening the kitchen cupboards. I mean, he loves opening the kitchen cupboards and he's never bothered pretty much for three years, never bothered and now
So I'm getting some messages, but I can't see them when I've got my eyes closed. Sorry. But I'll re I will read them at the end. But because I because of the light in the room, because it's what one thirty in the morning or something like that, and the the main light isn't very bright, so I have to have I got like this halogen light thing. And it's really, really bright. That's right in front of the camera. But it's a bit too bright for me to really feel comfortable looking at it. Uh, it's not so bad if I'm at the desk and the light's the other side of the room. I can still get a decent light for the camera and, and not be too <laughs> affected by the brightness. But And... I don't know if my glasses are going a bit dark as well, because they're they're supposed to in light, but that's more day daytime light, daylight. So that's part of the reason I close my eyes. Another reason is because I get bored listening to myself. And also It feels comfortable. You know, when I listen to somebody talking, I find it much more comfortable for me to have my eyes closed. Of course, it's not always acceptable. You know, job interviews, not a good time to do that. First dates, another one, perhaps not a great time. But I can't help it. It's just, I've got, you know, I, I remember I was seeing this person who was really a big name person in the Buddhist organization that I was involved in. And he came and did a speech, did a talk. And I sat there with my eyes closed. And I wasn't tired, I wasn't um, falling asleep, but I was listening, really intensely listening to every word he said. I just didn't find it very easy to listen when my eyes were open. So that's just me. I mean, we're all different. Uh, recently, I've been, I don't know if you've heard of it, but there's a, Uh, an app called Audible, which is part of Amazon. I think Audible started and Amazon bought bought them. Um, but there, it's basically talking books. So I, I'm uh, a monthly member of them, and every month you get a, a token, which you can use to buy any book in the catalog, any talking book whether it's, you know, £3 or £80, you, just, you know, that'll cover the cost of that book. And then you can also buy other books as you choose, if you want, between that. So you get 12 tokens a, a year, so you can buy 12 talking books a year. And so what I joined uh, last month, And the first, you know, I thought, well, what should I get, you know, out of the Audible books? So I had a look and I got myself a, it was basically a really big textbook on psychology. Uh, there was, I don't know, maybe 50 hours worth of audio. For this book, maybe maybe more in fact. So I got this book and I've been I've been listening to it. I couldn't be bothered to listen to it for the last two days because I just didn't want to. But it's all broken up into lectures. So the the professor has been going through all the different parts of psychology. It's, an, it's basically an introduction to psychology. 
lots of which I've already heard and read before. But for some reason, I get more from hearing it than from reading it. Um, I'm very more, very much more uh, an auditory person. I can't. I suppose I've already, I've always known that. But I read very slowly. But I can listen. You know, at the pace of the person speaking. I suppose I've got no choice. It's just you know. But you can speed it up, you can slow it down. Uh, I just leave it at the speed of the person's voice, which is fine. But I've been learning a lot of new things. And I'm really interested in this, this way of studying. The thing is, I just, I've noticed it's, it's one of those things where I kind of got, got to get to the idea that I can sit in my chair, I've got my iPhone on the side, and I can listen to it also on my laptop. Um, there's no app on the f television, on the Roku, for it, I don't think. So we should be handy if there was, but that's okay. If I can listen to it on my phone, but then I'm sitting here and the television isn't on. And there's, there's this part of me that wants to turn the television on. Even though there's not really any reason for it. Because I'm actually doing something. You know, I wouldn't have the television on if I was reading. I don't... I don't do generally more than one thing at a time. Like I don't make a recording at the same time as doing something else. The only combinations of things that I do at the same time is uh, I might be working on my website or working on promotion of the website while watching a movie or watching television. There's something to be said for doing just one thing at a time, I think. Something quite nice about just just being, you know, with yourself. Not necessarily trying to accomplish anything or you know, not thinking about anything else. You know, not worry, worrying about the outcome or thinking about previous stuff. But just being there in that moment. Sometimes I'll do that with washing up. Sometimes I'll get, I'll do some housework. I don't, I try to avoid housework. But you know, it's, it's something that can't be avoided completely. Just because there's no one else to do it. It's either I do it. And Andre, he just flat refuses. As he said to me, Daddy, I put enough energy creating the mess. Why would I want to clear it up? I want it to be messy. In fact, if I could, I would go outside and I'd pull everything out of the drain and drag it up the stairs into the flat and spread it all around, if I could. And I said to him, you know, Andre, that's a bit specific. It's a bit... You'd go and climb down the drain and pick all the bits of rubbish and dirt and drag it upstairs, but not just but up the stairs into the flat and just spread it all around. He said, yes. 
That's what I would do. And I stand by that. And do you know why I stand by it? I said, I don't know, Andre, why do you stand by it? He said, because everybody, each one of us, needs a purpose. We all need something that's bigger than us, that means more than just something, just an idea, something that you can actually practically do, something to look forward to. I said, yeah, but you're talking about climbing down a drain and picking up all the rubbish and picking it up and you know putting it all up the stairs and then spreading it all around the flat. That isn't that a little bit strange? He said, it might be strange for you, Daddy, but not for me. And I said, why is that? He said, because I'm a ferret. And spending time in dirty places is what I do, that's my nature. The stinkier, the better. I love really, really smelly places. And I, I said to him, Andre, you do realize that this is supposed to be a sleep session. He said, well, yeah, it's not my fault though, is it? I said, why? Why is it not your fault? He said, well, first of all, you're the one doing all the talking. You're the only voice that anyone can hear on this session. So regardless of what I've said or not, no one's gonna really know if it was me that said it, because all I can do is hear your voice. I said, well, yeah, I suppose so. He said, no supposing about it, Daddy. You can tell people that I say things, but at the end of the day, I'm a ferret. And ferrets can't talk. So you, you just sound silly. Making out that I want to climb down the drains and pick up rubbish and pull it upstairs just so that the flat can be stinky. So that I can enjoy being around stinky stuff because I'm a ferret. Why, why, would, I, why would I ever admit to that? And, you know, why would I want other people to know about that? I said, I don't know. You're the one that brought it up. He said, no, I couldn't have brought it up. I said, why, why Andre? I'm getting confused there. Why, why could you not have brought it up? He said, I'm a ferret. I can't talk. I can squeak, but that's about it. I said, well, if you can't talk, why, what are we doing now? We're, we're conversing, aren't we? He said, conversing, what's that? I said, well, it's conversing, com conversation in, 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 middle, in, having a conversation. He said, you mean talking? I said, yeah. Why didn't you just say talking then? I said, you, there are different words that mean the same thing. You don't always have to use the same words, you know, constantly. He said, yeah, but wouldn't it be easier? I suppose it'd be easier, but it's... It's just a bit boring to just use the same words all the time if there are other versions, you know, other words that mean the same thing. You know, we could use those just to brighten up the conversation a bit. And Andre said to me, well, why are there words that mean the same thing? What's the point in having more than one word that means the same thing. I said, I honestly don't know. I 
don't have an answer to that. He, he said to me, well, doesn't it seem a bit silly to have more than one word for the same thing? I said, no, not really. It's not really bothered me, if I'm honest. He said, why doesn't it bother you? I said, because it doesn't. Well, not everything has to bother different people. You know, something that maybe bothers you a little bit, other people using more than one word for the same thing. It's not like I said to you, um, you know, it's, it's, it makes things more interesting when we converse and talk. Well, that doesn't make sense though, does it, Dad? I said, why? And by the way, why are you saying Dad now? You were calling me Daddy a minute ago. Why, have you gone through puberty in the last five minutes? Suddenly an adult? He said, don't, don't have to take that tone with me. I said, what? He said, just calm it, calm it down. I said, Andre, behave yourself. I said, Daddy, Calm yourself. I said, you know what? If you keep misbehaving like this, you know what's going to happen. And he said, what are you going to do? You can't do nothing to me. I'm a big boy now. Nothing you can do can make any difference. Can't affect the way I think or feel. I'm the boss. I'm the boss. Yes, 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 yes. I'm the boss. I said, what, what was that? I'm the boss, I'm the boss. Yes, 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 I'm the boss. Was that some kind of a, a song? He said, yeah, it was a, it's the beginning of a song. So it's the beginning, so what, how does it go after that? He said, well, I don't really know what's gonna sort of going to be in the middle, you know, what the filler will be, but I've got an ending. Okay, well, what's the ending? I'm the boss. Yeah. I said, well, I know what will change your attitude. He said, what? I said, I, I know what will change your attitude, your, your smelly attitude. He said, how can you have a smelly attitude? You can have an attitude, but it doesn't smell. I said, you're a ferret, everything smells. Yeah, fair enough. I know what I'm gonna do that will put you in place. He said, what, what are you going to do, Daddy? Are you going to put me on the naughty step again? I said, no. I'm going to do the one thing that you, that you just, the last thing in the world that you'd want me to do. What, talk to me? No, not talk to you. What then? Give you a bath. And Andre just ran off and hid. So the good thing about not needing to focus on anything in particular is that your mind just starts to slow down and feel it feels more relaxed, that's just the standard thing. There's the calmness, the looseness, you know, the, it's as if your bones are just feeling more loose. I was thinking recently, it's a bit, a bit like the, do you know the Wizard of Oz and the Tin Man? And 
when they find a tin man, when Dorothy finds a tin man, he's all uh, stuck because of the, I don't know, it's the weather and he's all, and the metal is just stuck and not frozen. Uh, I forget what the name is, but anyway, he's stuck and she oils him, puts oils into his joints, into his elbow joints, into his fingers and hands and his mouth so he can move his mouth and his jaw. And uh, I quite like the idea recently, and I've been doing this because I've noticed that my hands have been a little bit stiff and my knees have been a little bit stiff. So I've just been just imagining pouring oil into the joints of my knees and into the joints of my knuckles and my fingers, and my hands, and just noticing how much more relaxed and easily that they move effortlessly. And it got me thinking about the the power of just imagination, really. I know it's often used, you know, visualization, but it's imagination. It's imagining something. And it doesn't have to be a visual thing. You can imagine having that feeling of oil being spread into your joints of your hands and your knees and your jaw that relaxes your jaw and you can just imagine that you don't have to see the can of oil being you know sprinkled into your joints you don't have to see another person holding that can. You don't even have to imagine yourself doing it. But you can imagine the feeling of that happening. Perhaps the sounds of that happening. Because ultimately, when it comes to feeling a certain way, whether it's relaxed or calm or tired or sleepy or positively wonderful, optimistic and enthused about uh, an opportunity that's come up which could change your life. It's a feeling. They're just feelings. And I say just feelings are powerful, powerful feelings that can transform you. And you can use visuals to get there. You can use imagination in that way. But even imagining feeling as though you're laying on your stomach and your back is being massaged. And you can feel tension just drifting away as if the person massaging you is actually sucking that tension, extracting that stress through their fingertips and hands out of your body. Even you feeling relaxed and calm. Because there's lots of ways you can do the same thing to get the same results or do the same thing to get different results or do a different thing to get the same results or differently 
in a way that is useful for you, but may be different to how you originally thought it might be. But isn't it amazing how relaxed you can feel without doing anything? Just by listening to a bunch of words, forming a bunch of sentences, forming a bunch of paragraphs. Just words, just sounds. causing physical changes to occur naturally as well as emotional relaxation to fill your body and mind Feeling calm, cool, loose, even the sound of my big black squeaky chair it can be a reminder of previous times that you've heard this squeaky chair whilst you felt relaxed and calm and safe knowing that even though my voice is becoming creakier, but not as creaky as the chair. You can enjoy that sense of just being here, not wanting anything, not needing anything not expecting anything but just being aware of the pleasure of safety that you can enjoy knowing that as every second passes by you move closer to more comfort you become more aware of that sense of calmness, that sense of relaxation, and it can feel nice knowing that actually you can let go but at the same time not actually do anything. So it's relaxing without relaxing. That's one of the things about relaxing is it can never be forced. You can't force yourself to relax. The same way you can't force yourself to like a certain food if you don't. Take Marmite, for example. You like it or you don't like it. Of course, there are ways of changing the, the way that you react to the taste buds in your mouth, on your tongue, and 
the way you associate certain feelings towards that particular food. Of course, there are ways of changing that, but I'm not here for that. I've got no interest in helping people to enjoy eating Marmite if they don't. I think, uh, I think our lives are fine to have your own personal likes when it comes to food. Maybe I should do a session. Maybe I should do a, a, a session on how to convert to, I'm not a big fan of the word conversion by the way, but uh, unless it's converting an, uh, a video file into an MP3 file or an MP3 file into a, a text file, you know, by transcribing. I like that kind of conversion. So, perhaps I could make a session converting people who want to, obviously those that want to watch the session, converting them from being um, maybe not the biggest fan of Marmite to absolutely loving it. maybe get sponsorship from Marmite. Ah. I quite like that challenge. It's got me interested. I try not to get too interested when I make these sessions because it's about not being interested. I might do that, that might be something that I'll quite enjoy. But that would be a that would be a full on session. That would uh, it'd be one of those sessions where I would chuck everything at it. I'd come in from all angles and I'd uh, really come in prepared. But at the same time, it'd be a complete waste of time. It'd be a waste of effort and totally pointless. But it might actually be popular just as a, as a laugh, really. Yeah. I wonder if as the days go by, sleeping just seems to naturally occur. And something that I do, and I've been doing it for a while now, and it seems to, it takes different formats, but the main thing is I talk to myself once I'm in bed with my eyes closed. You know, relax my body, relax my mind. My mind is relaxed, my body is relaxed. Uh, my breathing is natural. My breathing feels safe. I'm breathing safely, I'm breathing naturally. I sleep naturally, I sleep safely. I heal naturally, I heal safely. And sometimes I imagine the healing spreading through my veins to all the different parts of my body. allowing that healing to spread, not just to all the parts of my body, but specifically 
to allow that healing to go where it is needed. Even if I don't actually know myself where it's needed, my body will know. Your body knows. To sp you know, spread that healing energy to heal whichever part of your body is most in need at that particular time. And when that's happening, sleeping is so important because that's when so much of the healing takes place. Not necessarily just the physical healing, but also the mental healing. Maybe the mind sorting out things in the form of dreams. Allowing you to maybe release certain emotions and overcome obstacles and issues from the past. So when you do wake up, you feel refreshed, but also in some ways recovered. Like you've somehow moved forward from something that was holding you back before, but you might not be actually able to connect to what it is that something's happened, something's changed, and you feel different now. That can be quite a nice sensation to have that feeling of knowing that something's changed and that you have moved forward. Yet, at the same time, you're not sure what it is that has changed and in what way that you have moved forward. Through, over, under, around, whatever that issue may have been back then, seems to have just disappeared, evaporated, been removed. Like a, an obstruction in the road has just been taken away so that the traffic can continue unobstructed. And you just move forward and perhaps you look back less because there's nothing to see. Because all the things to see are ahead of you. And are happening now. And what's ahead it's more interesting than what was behind. And there's some people Some people might think of the, the past as a toilet basin. Sometimes, you know, you go to the toilet and you flush that toilet because you don't want to see that 
again. We don't leave it in there, a big poo. I don't think, oh, I might want to revisit that in a month's time. I won't flush the toilet. No, you flush it. If it's particularly impressive, maybe you take a picture and post it on Facebook, but generally not. Because you're moving forward. And sleeping easily and naturally is all part of that process of moving forward. Happily and naturally, easily and safely. And that brings us to the end of this live Let Me Bore You to Sleep thingy. And that's me banging a can of Coke. I didn't mean to, it stuck to my finger, which was strange. And I'll speak to you and I'll see you next time. Bye.